Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Christy Hu. I am very excited to share that I am joining Google this summer as a UX design intern. Yay! So in this video, I want to share the exact portfolio presentation I did with Google. I want to share this because when I was preparing for my interviews, I look up for a lot of content on YouTube and that helped me a lot. So by sharing this, I hope my experience will be helpful to you as well if you are currently interviewing or you are interested in UX design. And if you don't know what a portfolio presentation is, it's typical for a UX design job interview. It's usually about 45 minutes where you spend the first 30 minutes to share one or two projects. It could be school projects, personal projects, or a project that you work on in a past internship. And the last 15 minutes is for a Q&A. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here is my presentation. Hi, my name is Christy Hu. I'm super excited to be here today to introduce myself and my experience. And let's get started. Here's the agenda. I will first introduce myself and go through two case study. As a kid, I always loved drawing and painting. And when I was 16 years old, I came to the US with my family. After graduating from high school, I decided to pursue graphic design in college because not only I enjoy designing, but also I'm good at it and I feel proud of doing it. When I was in community college, I participated in a lot of design events and competitions. One of them led me to UX design. That's pretty good. I joined the UX design cohort in 2019, learned about UX for the first time, collaborated with fellow apprentices, and visited some tech companies in the Bay Area. That experience changed my life. I found myself love being in a collaborative environment and working on products that constantly improving and benefiting anyone's daily life. And from that point on, I continued to do UX design. And last summer, I interned at schoolhouse as a product design intern. Next, I want to talk about my story with Google. Google has always been my dream company. Beyond from being an active Google user, I visited Google offices many times, knew a few designers from Google, and had a great impression of Google culture. I hope to be part of the community one day and contribute in leading the future design standards. The first project I chose to present is the dashboard design I took the lead on in my last internship at Schoolhouse. I'm really proud of the project and this project is launched at the end of my internship. I spent a, about eight weeks working with my design manager and one of the main engineers. The design tool that I used was Figma. Before I dive into the project, I want to give a brief intro about Schoolhouse. Schoolhouse is the bridge between high school students who want to tutor others voluntarily and students who want to get tutoring for free. The task that I received from my design manager was to redesign my profile site because we found out my profile is underutilized, users don't find it helpful to them. In my opinion, it should be users' personal space to look, manage, and keep track of their learning. So I was discovering what information would be helpful to display in user profile. First, I analyzed different pages in our platform. These are the pages uh, related to individual users. They exist under different tabs on the menu, so it was difficult to discover and navigate. The design is inconsistent too. I assume that if we combine and reorganize this information together, it will be more motivating and efficient for users to learn and tutor on Schoolhouse. I've never worked on such a challenge like this before, so I was worried and anxious if I would be able to learn what I need for this project. So I started to use user profile as a starting point and conducted user research. And I wanted to point out that we are a small team, so we want this project to be quick and easy to build and build on existing design pattern. 
And because we don't have a research team, I had to conduct research for my project. My goal is to find out what's important to users and analyze their habits of using Schoolhouse. Because we had a relatively tight timeline, I launched a survey on the platform and conducted user interview to begin with. And here are my findings about learners. Learners didn't find my profile useful, learners want to get recommended sessions to attend, and they most likely to browse upcoming sessions after they come back, and the most frequently used features for them are to explore new sessions and view my session. And what I find about tutors are they don't use my profile because they think they don't need it. Tutors have a hard time navigating on my session page, and the most frequently used features are host a new session, see session request, and view feedback. By analyzing my findings through user research, I was able to summarize four main pain points. First, for tutors, frequently used buttons are hidden. Second, users, mainly tutors, don't have a centralized place to manage their tutor data. Third, the visual hierarchy of my session is confusing. And lastly, lack of customization and personalization for tutor. And I will walk through how I tackled them in a moment. And my goal for this project is to allow both tutors and learners to manage personalized items in one place easily and simplify the user flow to increase engagement. So the first user pain point, frequently used buttons are hidden. I first started by looking at some other similar platforms such as Khan Academy, Co Academy, and ATP List. By looking at their dashboard, I understand the biggest advantage of having a dashboard is to provide an overview for, of the user's activities, categorize information, and prioritize frequently used features. What I took away was the way they group information, such as using a module design system, a left menu bar, and I really like the way how PayPal group quick links together using simple icons. So I gathered this inspiration and started sketching. Here's one of the sketches I did to try grouping information together. After discussing some initial sketches and wireframing with the lead designer, we tested a few variations and landed on this wireframe. A newly designed dashboard page that combines some existing web pages such as My Session, Certification, and regrouping existing features into one page. In this direction, we are able to prioritize frequently used sessions on frequently used actions on top displaying a high-level personalized picture of user's activity and make information easier to find. Also, we make the design consistent to both user group, tutors and learners. Because there are a few features that are only available to tutors, I started with designing the one for tutor and eliminate the features on the dashboard design for learners. So this way, it's really easy for engineer to build and keep the design consistent. And the sitemap show how information are grouped under the dashboard. The naming of subpages is intuitive to users based on users' feedback. The yellow tags are new designs that I designed for this project, and I updated the UI design for the rest of the features to keep the interface refreshed and consistent. The second pain point was it takes too many steps to join a session. So before this is what they land on after they log in, they will come to the schoolhouse main page. So they will need to click on my session and find the session that's currently live now and click join session button to join the Zoom meeting in progress, which takes a several clicks and if they have a lot of sessions that they register for, they need to find the right one to join. My first idea was to bring the join session banner to the dashboard. If users land on the dashboard page directly, they can click the button to join immediately. But I didn't stop there. I went on thinking different variations to see how I can make it better and utilize the space well. These are a few variations that I explored during the process. I discussed with my uh, manager about my design decisions and she gave me 
a lot of feedback. We later went on with option C because it's the easiest to understand. And for option D, E, and F, it was a bit confusing about the relationship between the left and right portion. Through testing with users and getting feedback from the engineer as well, I made a several improvements on option C, the original design. And here is what I landed on the final design. Um, on the coming up soon session, um, users can see the most three upcoming sessions that they registered for. I included the topic icon and the tutor icon to make it more identifiable. The countdown text on the right is small but helpful. The arrow on the right indicates that this is clickable and users can click the entire arrow, um, the entire row to view details of this session. And when the session is happening today, it will be highlighted. And if the session is currently live now, it will show the live now tag and also a join session button will pop up. So this is what it looks like currently. Uh, when users log in, they will see the dashboard. And here you can see the join session is there, which means General Algebra 1 Q&A is currently live and users can just directly click the button and join the Zoom meeting, which is so much efficient and smooth according to our users. And the third pain point, the visual hierarchy of my session is confusing. This is the old uh, my session page. Users can see um, schedule of each session in a series. And if they register for a lot of, a lot of session, it will be a long page to scroll and not good use of the space. And tutors cannot easily filter sessions that they host versus sessions that they attend. And the filter of upcoming and past is hidden on the top right corner, which is not easy to find. So these are a few explorations that I tried um, to redesign the my session page, such as ways to sort and filter, a calendar view, or a list view. Interestingly, when I test the list view with user, I got both positive and negative reaction because some users think it's confusing they have never seen this design before and they thought it's something new and some understand and don't mind it. And after discussing with engineer, we didn't move forward with the list view feature even though it um, simplified the user face, um, interface and eliminate unnecessary information, but it will take more time to develop this new design um, and doesn't align with our goal. So we um, continue to use the existing card design um, style. So here is the final redesigned version of my session page. You can see on the left menu bar, my session tag is highlighted. Um, users can now easily di uh, distinguish sessions versus series because I have um, designed two co column layout um, by putting series card on the right and the sessions um, card on the left column. So it's a better visual hierarchy and good use of the space. And I also added an advanced filter option on the um, top right corner and it's really easy for users to uh, view upcoming versus past session. Besides from conducting user testing through Zoom and watching users complete user flows and tasks that I designed for them, I also ask for feedback in the Slack community often. It's a quick way for us to gather users' reaction and preferences. So here is the final design of the dashboard. Now users have a centralized dashboard to manage and easily access their learning. They will land on the dashboard page every time they log into Schoolhouse. And you can see the um, um, quick action buttons on the top and underneath it's coming up soon, which shows the most three upcoming sessions. And then it will recommend some upcoming sessions based on their uh, preferences, uh, give them updates on their following tutors and topics. 
and lastly it's about their information included statics that um, they learned on schoolhouse and the second page is my sessions which we just saw the filter provide tutor and advanced filtering um, feature and on the past session it's the same design and on my certification page is the simple redesign of the UI to make it more accessible and on my tutoring I continue to use the same system um, the session card and combine multiple tutor related content into one page to provide a quick overview so we receive really positive reaction from the user and I want to show you the before and after my design. Before the profile is really simple, not useful and after I created the dashboard to combine important information for users. For my session page, it's much more easy to understand. My certification page and my tutoring page which combine multiple tutor related items as you can see all the four pages are really consistent uh, use the same design um, style and here's the baseline data i received from the engineer after two months of launching since this is a new feature we launched we didn't measure data up front and i'm hoping to see through the next iterations and we can hopefully see improvement on the data of more users starting to use um, the dashboard to achieve their goals. As a reflection, if I have more time, I will design empty, empty states to be more intriguing, implement customizations and onboard new and existing design to the dashboard. And in summary, I designed dashboard to make key actions more discoverable and accessible, improve consistency throughout several pages related to personal learning items, and improve efficiency completing tasks on Schoolhouse. And what I learned by doing this project was to collaborate with engineer and hand off final design, challenge myself to think of a lot of iterations, and conduct user tests and incorporate user feedback. So that the first project any questions so far before I move on to my next project if not I will continue the second project is a hackathon project I complete in Adobe Creative Gen in partnership with Nickelodeon my teammate and I completed this project in 48 hours and my role in this project was the illustrator and UI UX designer and the tools that we that I used was Adobe XD and Adobe Illustrator. The prompt that we received was design an iPad app that provides a safe way for kids to communicate, share, and connect with their friends and family during their uh, viral outbreak. When we first read the brief, we felt it was too vague. We wondered what do kids think, like, and want, and what's the problem that we are solving and since this is our first time collaborating in a remote setting do we have enough time to finish this project we wanted to uh, make sure that we have enough time to do a working prototype therefore we skip primary research and start doing secondary research to help us understand the problem that kids were facing instead of jumping in with our assumptions by looking at social media, news articles, video, we started to understand what kids were feeling at that time. Um, some of the kids said, I feel my dad will bring it home and spread it to all of us. We can try and connect virtually, but it's not the same. Another kid said, I don't get to spend as much time with my friends. So we were noticing kids were lonely, bored, and distracted in class. And we can really felt it and sometimes we felt the same way too. Once we started to understand the problem, we hope to help them overcome their fear and reconnect with their close friends. So we started asking ourselves, how might we relieve kids' stress? 
how might we educate them about staying safe during the pandemic, and how might we make the quarantine life more fun, and lastly, how might we gain kids' parents' trust to allow their kids to use our app. So our goal is to create a safe virtual world for kids aged from 11 to 15 years old to learn useful topics, level up, and connect with their friends in a meaningful way during the quarantine. We think by learning useful information, such as how to take care of themselves during the pandemic and learning fun subjects at home, um, it will distract them from being um, lonely and also ease their nerve. And the first thing that challenged us was designing for kids. We understand it's different to design for kids than adults, so we read articles from News and Norman Group to check out other and check out other apps that are designed for kids. We studied them and summarized key design principles that we found, which are designing self-explanatory interface, gamifying the experience, giving clear instructions, and eliminating unnecessary functions. So we kept those principles in mind while we make design decisions. And what inspired me during this research process was I really um, enjoy looking at Duolingo's language learning app and I saw how gamification the learning experience could make a difference and I started to think how we can apply the same principle such as um, using a reward system um, accountability friends, leaderboard, and etc. in our app to motivate them um, and help them learn and enjoy being on this platform. So we think by understanding the design principles, it shows us what's important to them and how to be authentic and respect to our target audience. This is Benny. He is one of our target audience. He's a single child living with his parents in the Bay Area. He feels trapped at home, confused and worried about what's happening and addicted to TV shows. And he wants to reconnect with his friend, escape from reality and discover something fun. So we want to tell kids that we are all together. So after understanding the problem, our users, we started to do some sketches. These are my initial sketches. It's kind of generic at first. I look at some other social media app and brainstorm different features that could possibly have on our platform. And by communicating with my teammates, we listen to each other's feedback. And he reminded me of a game that we love to play in our childhood. And so I revised my sketches to make it more kids friendly. By combining our best ideas together, we decided to have only three features. And my second sketches show um, how the illustrations can represent our main features. We went with the one on the right hand side because we thought it was an imaginary place that islands flowing on the sky. Um, it represents um, kids can escape from the reality for now and live in this imaginary world. And I think if we had more time, I would like to have brought in three to four kids to test these variations and make a data-driven decision. In the design process, we study Nickelodeon's design guidelines and follow their color palettes and typography system in our design. And in order to work more efficiently and have a clear idea of our product, we created a user flow to help us manage the task and separating what each of us should be working on. And finally, I can introduce our final product. We designed an informative onboarding process to help kids learn about different functions when they first use the app and also reward them with a gift to encourage um, then to engage in the app and feel welcome to be here. And the first feature is designed around learning experience. Because kids express their concerns on the pandemic, we think it's necessary to educate them about how to keep themselves safe during the pandemic. It's also a good time to learn something they are interested in. The video and contents are designed for children in that age specifically. 
And the second feature is sharing. When they click on my home, they can see their badges that they earned by learning content, episodes that they were watching, and share the pictures in real life. And the third feature is connecting with their friends. Because children cannot visit their neighbors and friends' house physically, we hope um, they can visit their friends' virtual home on our platform by visiting um, their uh, favorite TV shows and photos and badges. So it would be a fun way to connect with their friends. As a reflection, if I have more time, I would like to discover different use type, user type and edge cases, balance between education and entertainment, and complete the entire user flow for how the user will discover our app to become an active user and invite their friends into our platforms. And what I learned was to have a clear plan and distribute tasks upfront, apply an existing design system to our product, and consider a string when designing for teenagers. And after all, I had my younger brother test the app for me. He really enjoyed exploring the islands, but he wondered what the actual topics are available on this platform. And can they suggest um, some topics to include? But overall, he said he loved it. And looking back at this project after more than a year now, I felt there are some areas of improvement that I can make. But I really enjoy working on this uh, hackathon project in 48 hours with my teammate to produce such a lovely and fun app design. So that's my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy it. Well, thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you enjoy watching my portfolio presentation and learn something from it. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's definitely satisfying for me to see my progress from the first draft to this version. And I still think there's a lot of things that I could improve on. And if you have any suggestions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Or if you're interested in hearing about my interview experience or my internship experience at Google, feel free to leave it in the comment below as well. Thank you so much again. Let me know if this is helpful to you. And I will see you next time. Bye.